Hi folks, Saturday evening IDFC first declared its quarterly result and it has been a brilliant set of numbers for Q1 of FI23. And post results, today the stock has jumped over 10%. Now if you have been following my videos, you would know that I am myself an investor in IDFC first and I am very optimistic about its future growth prospect. In fact, I recently mentioned about it in my video on why banking sector is looking very bright. The important aspect in Q1 number was the growth in its core operating profit that shows the strong fundamental of IDFC First. With this result, IDFC First has now declared a consecutive four quarters of net profits, leaving behind the legacy issues that it was trying to address for a long time since 2018 after the merger of Capital First with IDFC Bank to become IDFC First. And it is one bank that I am closely tracking and keeping my faith on the leadership of Mr. Vedyanathan who has a brilliant track record of over 30 years in Indian banking system. Now I have already created an in-depth video on IDFC first last year so I don't want to get into those details. Today I want to discuss the quarterly result of IDFC first and help you understand its Q1 performance. But before we discuss further, this is not a stock tip. This video is only for educational purpose. All right. Let's get started. So this is the snapshot of bank performance as of uh, June 30th, 2022. And if you look at it, funded asset, which is basically the advances, the credit growth, it stood at 1.37 lakh crore rupees that has jumped 21% year on year. Next, if you look at customer deposit, it stood at 1.02 lakh crore rupees that is again up 21% year on year. If you look at CASA ratio, which is the ratio of current account and saving account as compared to the total deposit, it stood at 50.04%, which is one of the best in the industry. Although it is down 82 basis point, which is not that significant. Next, which is very important parameter that is core operating profit and it has grown to 987 crore and the growth is 64% year on year, which is exceptional. We'll discuss the reason behind this uh, sharp jump in core operating profit. Then if you look at the net interest margin of the bank, it stood at 5.89%, which is again one of the best in the industry and has grown by 39 basis point year on year. Next, if you look at the asset quality, its net NPA stood at 1.3%. And if you look at capital adequacy ratio, it stood at 15.77%, which is up 21 basis point year on year. Now again, the very important part, which is the profit after tax, bank has reported a profit of 474 crore in Q1 of FI23, against a loss of 630 crore in Q1 of FI22. So it has been an exceptional performance in terms of profit after tax. Next, if you look at the return on asset, it stood at 0.97% against 0.77% of Q4 of FI22. And if you look at the return on equity, it stood at 8.96% against 6.67%. Next, if you look at uh, the growth in profitability, look at this, the way the profits have grown quarter on quarter. It was 152 crore in Q2 of FR22, then jumped 85% to 281 crore, then jumped 22% to 343, and then jumped 38% to 474 crore in latest quarter. Then if you look at the return on average total asset, it has improved from 0.37% to 0.64% to 0.77% to current levels of 0.97%. Next, if you look at the return on average equity, it was 2.97% in Q2 of FI22, then jumped to 5.44%, then jumped to 6.67%, and the latest return on average equity is 8.96%. Now, what are the reasons for the growth? It's mentioned here. The strong profitability trajectory of the bank is driven by powerful unit economics, then retail lending business ROE of 18 to 20%. So this is very important. Although the overall ROE is still in 8 to 9% range, but its retail lending business has grown at an ROE of 18 to 20%. Next factor is retiring of high cost liability. So again, as we discussed, there were legacy issues for IDFC first because of its merger with IDFC and there were a lot of bad loans and infra loans and that has also reduced. So that's high cost liability has also reduced then growth in credit card business. So IDFC first has launched its credit card that is growing at a phenomenal rate. Then improving branch productivity. So IDFC first opened a lot of branches in last few years and its productivity has increased. Then bank has also launched a lot of new initiatives like its wealth management service, fast tag, cash management service, etc. Then next parameter is profitable wholesale business, reduced provisions and improved operating leverage. Next important parameter is to look at the breakup of its advances. So if you look at it, its gross funded asset 
stood at 1.37 lakh crore against 1.13 lakh crore in Q1 of last year and it has grown by 21%. But it is very important to understand the breakup in terms of retail versus wholesale loan. So if you look at the retail loan book of the bank, it was 64,600 crore in June 21 and it has grown to 90,630 crore in June 22. And look at this growth rate, 40% growth year on year in its retail loan book. So basically, it was the retail loan book in uh, June 21 was somewhere around 56% of total loan book. But now it has become almost 65% of total loan book. So retail loan book has grown quite a lot. And that's where the bank was focused on to grow its retail business. Now within retail book, if you see the best growth has come from home loan that has grown at 61%. Then loan against property has grown at 15%. Wheels loans has grown at 24, then consumer loans have grown at 42% and a lot of other initiatives like digital gold, other loans have grown at 123%, credit card has grown at 183%. So the retail loan book has grown at an exceptional rate. Now another important parameter is its wholesale funded asset that has degrown by 9% and that's where bank was focused on to increase its retail loan book and reduce its exposure in its corporate and infra loan. And uh, because these are the loan books where there were a lot of NPAs. So bank has been successfully able to reduce its exposure from wholesale funded asset. Next, if you look at the growth in its retail and commercial finance, look at it. It was around 42,200 crore in March 19, then grown to 57,000, 75,000 crore, 92,000. So it has been a 30% growth in last three years in terms of CEGR. And today it is 1.01 lakh crore rupees. And if you look at the interest income, there's a strong rise in net interest income that has grown at 26% CAGR. And the bank says that net interest income has grown at 26% CAGR in three years and we expect to sustain similar growth in the foreseeable future. And we expect to maintain net interest margin around 6% during FR23. Next, there's a very important parameter that you should look. So at the time of merger of IDFC with Capital First to create this new entity IDFC First, the bank had given some guidelines for FR24-25 and it is very important to track if bank is on right track or not. So first if you look at it in terms of capital, if you see capital adequacy ratio was 16.51% at the time of merger and bank had given a guidance to maintain it more than 13% and it is at levels of 15.77%. So bank has been able to maintain that capital ratio. Next if you look at the liability. Bank CASA ratio was just 8.68% at the time of merger and bank had given a guidance to increase it to 30% in FR24 and 50% thereafter and bank has already made it 50% in June 22 quarter. So bank is way ahead of its target and the guidance. Next if you look at the branches, it was just 206 branch at the time of merger and bank had given a guidance of 800 to 900 branches by FR24-25 that already has grown to 651 branches. Next, if you look at uh, parameters like asset quality, this is again very important. And the retail and commercial finance at the time of merger was just 36,900 crore and bank had given a guidance of 1 lakh crores by FY24-25 and bank has already achieved that number uh, by increasing to 1.01 lakh crore in latest June quarter. So bank is again way ahead of its uh, guidance. Next, if you look at the retail and commercial finance as percentage of total funded asset, it was 35%. Target was to grow it to 70%. It is already 74%. Next, if you look at the wholesale funded asset, it was 56,700 crore at the time of merger. Bank wanted to reduce it to less than 40,000 crore and it is already 30,700 crore. So again, uh, on target. And uh, if you look at the gross NPA, it was 1.97%. It wanted to make it to 2.25% and it is at 3.36%. So there's still uh, some work to be done to reduce its uh, gross NPA. Again, net NPA was 0.95%. Bank gave a guidance of 1 to 1.2% and it is at 1.3%. So pretty much on track. Next, if you look at the net interest margin, it was 3.1% at the time of merger. Bank gave a guidance in the range of 5 to 5.5%. It is already 5.89%. So overall, if you see uh, return on asset, it was minus 3.7%. The guidance was 1.4 to 1.6%. It is at 0.97%. If you look at return on equity, it was minus 36%. The guidance was 13 to 15% by FI 24 25. 
and bank is uh, at 8.96 percent so there is still a lot of work to be done to increase the return on equity as well as reduce the NPA. Uh, overall if you look at it uh, I remember there was an article in May 22 where Mr. Vedinathan mentioned that we are guiding for 25% retail credit growth for IDFC first and expect operating profit to compound by 45% next year. And that is what bank is on track. Uh, the way bank is growing, it is on track. And if it continues to do that, it is going to create a lot of wealth for its shareholder. Now let us look at the share price movement of IDFC first as well as its shareholding pattern. So this is the latest share price of IDFC first. It is at levels of 42.25, 12.5% uh, up at the time of creating this video. And uh, if you look at the last one year of performance, it has been on the uh, fall side. In fact, if you just zoom out a bit, it touched a high of nearly 70 rupees uh, at the time of uh, March 21. And then it uh, declined more than 50%. And remember, it recently touched a low of almost 29 rupee. And since then, look at this. It has jumped 44, 45%. So it's all about keeping faith, having your conviction. And if you had conviction and if you had added it on dips, uh, today it is already at levels of 42. Still, it is much below its uh, highs. But I expect the way bank is given the guidance and the way bank is growing, it is going to grow in terms of share price. And now let us also look at the uh, valuations as well as shareholding pattern. So if you look at it at current le levels, it is now at P ratio of 21 and has got a price to book value of 1.24, which is looking very decent. So even at current levels, bank is looking very attractive. And if you look at the shareholding pattern, interestingly, if you see, especially the DIIs have actually increased the shareholding in June quarter in IDFC first. So it was 9.58 and it has increased to 10.19. So that shows that even the DIIs are confident about the IDFC first and have increased their exposure in IDFC first. So this is it for this video. I believe that IDFC first is on right track to its growth and has all the fundamental building blocks in place to grow at 20 to 25% CGR rate in terms of credit growth. And if IDFC first is able to grow at that rate, it will reward its investor handsomely in the long term. So tell me in the comments, what is your take on IDFC first? I hope you'll find this video useful. Thank you.